All right, so this problem says, for which of the following values of C will there be two distinct real solutions of the equation 5x to the second plus 16x plus C equals zero? Okay, so the key part here is distinct real solutions because all of these can be solutions um, to this, but four of them will be solutions with imaginary numbers um, which is not what you're looking to solve for. They're just looking for real solutions. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go through the process of how you find the zeros of this, um, kind of like I did in the last video. So again, the idea here is we're going to break this up into factors, meaning that we're gonna break it up into two parentheses like this, or actually, sorry, this one's gonna be a little bit different um, because there's a number in front. So because of this number, we're going to break it up because this number makes it different. So what the steps are here, previously, if there's no number here, you just look for numbers that multiply to be this, add to be this. That's what you break it up into two parentheses. Here, it's going to be different. You have to multiply your first number by your last number here, and then that's what you're going to find factors of. So what I mean by that is I'm going to make a factor tree factors of okay so easiest way to do this would be go uh, multiple choice by multiple choice um, and see what works so we can start with the first one a if i were to plug three in for c that would mean i would take the first number multiply by the last number so five times three gives me 15. so that's what you're going to find factors of so basically you now need factors of 15 so meaning numbers that multiply to be 15 and add to be 16, okay? And if it works, that's your answer. And I can show you how to how that's your answer. Um, but in this problem, you actually don't have to find the solutions. You just have to figure out which one gives you real solutions. Um, but basically, factors of 15 would be 15 and one, five and three, and that's it. So when you add those, find the sum of them. This is 16, this is eight. So as you can see, our middle term is 16, and that was what these two factors make. So now, this is going to work, okay? So since this is going to work, here's the key part I want to make sure is understood. Since those work, A is going to be your answer, okay? Because, like, if I plug in 9 here, 5 times 9 gives me 45, there's no factors that factors of 45 that add to be 16. Same with 14. If I plug in 14, multiply it by 5, I get 70. There's no factors of 70 that add to be 16, and so on. So just the fact that when I plugged in 3 and multiplied 5 and 3 and got factors of it, factors of 15 that add to be 16, that automatically tells me that A is the answer. I will, I'm going to go through this and show you what, how to get the actual answers or find what the zeros would be, just in case that's a question that you come upon. Um, but like I said, I want to make sure that you know the thought process of why A is your answer in this, because it gives you real solutions because you can find factors. Okay, so now that we know these are 15 and 1 are my factors, what you have to do is break up your middle term. Okay, I'm going to break up my middle term into these two new terms. So I'm going to bring down my 5x, bring down my 5x squared, and then I'm going to break this up into 15x and 1x. So plus 15x, plus 1x, and then plus, remember we plugged in 3 for c, so plus 3 equals 0. Okay, so now once you've done that, you're going to do what's called factor by grouping. You're going to group your first two terms in parentheses, and group your second two terms in parentheses. And then what you're going to do is factor out anything that, that can be factored out. So in 5x squared plus 15x, the coefficient that can be factored out is 5, because 5 can, be go, can go into both of them. And then the x's, you can factor out 1x, because this has 2x, this has 1x, so I'm going to factor out a single x. So then in parentheses, I'm going to leave what's left. The only thing left would be x plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to do the second th same thing for the second one. 
So the second one actually doesn't have anything that can be factored out because there's nothing that is um, in common to be factored out. So if that's the case, you just factor out a one. If there's nothing larger that can be factored out. Because remember, the GCF of everything is just one. So my GCF would be one. And then in parentheses, I leave what's left, which is x plus three equals zero. Okay, so now this shows you that you're on the right track because this and this have to match. Okay, if they don't, then you mess something up. But because they match, what we can do now is we're going to group the terms that were factored out, which is 1 and 5x. So we're going to group those in their own set of parentheses, 5x plus 1. And then the second set of parentheses is going to be what was in common, the x plus 3. And then bring down equals 0. Okay, so now once we're here, this is going to be like the last um, example we talked about, where you now have two sets of parentheses equal to zero. So you have to just set each individual one equal to zero and solve. So that will be 5x plus 1 equals zero and x plus 3 equals zero. Okay, so now we solve them. So this one I would subtract 1, subtract 1, 5x equals negative 1, divide by 5, x equals negative 1 fifth. And then I solve this one, minus 3, minus 3, x equals 3. So these are my two solutions. So like if you have a problem like this and they actually have to, you actually have to find the solutions, that's how you do it. Um, so my solutions here would be x equals negative 1 fifth and x equals 3. Again, with this problem specifically though, all they want to know was which value you plug in to get real numbers. Um, and that was 3 because when you plug in 3, you're able to find two factors of 15 that equal 16.